Hi LEGO fans! It's Tuesday December the 6th and with 25 doors down, 95 gifts remain cowering in their cardboard tombs awaiting judgement. After yesterday's tragic selection of advent calendar tat, they are right to be afraid. LEGO friends came last with whatever emerged from the creator's nightmares, and not one of these substandard gifts was worthy of a festive bonus point. The saving grace was a Rocket Raccoon minifigure which won 5 points for Gift of the Day. As we embark on what will hopefully not be a tragic Tuesday, the LEGO friends are in last place with 12 points, City is joint third with 14 points, and shares the middle ground with LEGO Harry Potter. Guardians of the Galaxy are second with a respectable 15 points, and using the force to their full advantage, in first place they are LEGO Star Wars with 18 points. Shall we tear open some doors? After Monday's nightmarish creation giving me palpitations, we're going for door number 6 on LEGO Friends and, uh, excuse me Father Christmas, okay, nothing for me this year. And um, what do we have here? Okay, we've got one of the micro dolls, in fact, uh, you can kind of see her on the box there, at least we know what she looks like. Uh, I think this one's called Ava and she's in a bunch of Friends sets, so obviously LEGO had a a warehouse full of these, um, made of three parts by the looks of it. Not very exciting, but if you like micro dolls, then I'm sure you'll be very happy. And so our first gift for Tuesday the 6th of December is this Ava micro doll. Did I put this together right? One moment please. Is that the way? That is not the way. Ah, this must be the way. Yes, we have an Ava micro doll, and LEGO must have had an overstock of these. She also appears in 41444, Heart Lake City Organic Cafe, 41679, Forest House, 41693, Surfer Beachfront, and 41667, Heart Lake City Murder House. Okay, I made that last one up. Personally, I hate dolls, especially those Russian dolls. They're so full of themselves. The printing is reasonably executed, and LEGO even managed to mould their name into her butt. I really like the hair mould complete with pigtails and being part of the LEGO system. It totally passes the Voldemort test. Oh no, Canovera! And finally we have a nicely printed face with green eyes. Just don't stare into those eyes for too long because being a ginger, Anna will steal your soul. Next we have door number 6 from LEGO Star Wars, and I'm sensing it may be time for a weapons rack. Let's see what we've got, um, a lot of grey by the looks of it, mm -hmm, grey and sand blue, oh what is that? Okay, indeterminate ship, um, yeah I have no idea, I'm really good with the uh, the initial trilogy, the, the first three movies or whatever they were, but um, yeah these later ones I'm not so good with. So. Let me put this together, I might have to Google this, but I will tell you what this is. So after a little of what classes as research these days, this appears to be the modified Omicron class attack shuttle that served as the personal starship of the Bad Batch. You may know it as the Marauder. I don't have any Bad Batch jokes, so let's try this. How does Wicket get around the forest moon of Endor? Ewoks? Similar to Darth Vader's Imperial Shuttle, the Marauder has folding wings. Mine is on a little white stand which is not part of the model. The canopy is made of a trans red tile which looks suitably badass, and each one of the wings is on a pivot point so you can do this. It's an interesting enough little build, but I think you have to have seen the Bad Batch to appreciate it. For me the body of the ship doesn't look like it's been put together properly, but I have checked it on the box. Maybe mine just came from a Bad Batch. I'm not a big fan of the small scale ship builds and this one doesn't really pique my interest. That said, it will of course get fair and impartial judging at the end of the video. Calendar number 3 for today is LEGO City and door number 6 of course, oh god, look at that, I've torn it open, uh, oh but hey, 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 we got a minifigure, minifigures are always good, it's always a good day when you get a minifigure, and this one looks like, um, it's the doorman, uh, what's it called, uh, Tip, Tippy, Tippy the doorman, um, as it says on the top of the box there somewhere. So yeah, nice, uh, always good to get a minifigure, actually some nice metallic printing on the torso. I shall put him together and we shall take a good look. And so we have Tippy Doorman, who unsurprisingly is a doorman, or door person you might call them these days. 
What's that you got for me there, Tippy? Tippy comes with a one by one round printed tile, which is a cookie. Unfortunately, it seems Tippy doesn't work at the Double Tree, otherwise, we'd have a nice chocolate chip cookie. This seems to be a much less pleasing sugar cookie, complete with sprinkles. I really like Tippy's uniform. Doormen always look very smart. I once worked at a hotel and a photon tried to check in. I asked them if they had any luggage, but it turned out they were travelling light. There's no printing on the dark red legs, but we do get some really nice metallics on the printed torso. Like any professional doorman, Tippy is wearing white gloves. And this must be a very fancy hotel because he has epaulettes on his jacket. If I'm not mistaken, he looks a little bit embarrassed about it. He's no Star Lord or Harry Potter, but it's always a good day when you get a minifigure, and I really like this one. Is Tippy tipped to be gift of the day? We'll find out in just a couple of minutes. Keeping this wagon train rolling, we're moving on to the Guardians of the Galaxy, and I did actually watch the holiday special, and I can tell you it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I do recommend you go out and watch that on uh, Disney Plus if you've got it, and I don't recommend you open door number six. What the heck is this? Um, I see a, a, a golden spike. Uh, I guess one of those things that Yondu flies. Uh, is that a cookie? What? In Earth have we got here? Uh, it's a box full of stuff. Um, I think this is another one of those things. This is going to be filler. I'm going to have to put this together and take a closer look. But um, yeah, let's do that. I'll see you on the other side. Okay, so I must confess, I'm still not very sure what this is. I thought at first it might be a toolbox and then went researching toolbox jokes. What's the smartest tool? A thermometer, because it has so many degrees. Speaking of tools, I used to run an origami workshop. One day I misplaced Dwayne Johnson's cutting tool. I can't believe I lost the rocks, paper, scissors. The box is simply constructed and contains a bunch of interesting looking stuff. This definitely looks like Yondu's golden arrow, which he controls with that weird thing on his head. This looks like the nuclear bomb detonating button, which Rocket Raccoon tells Groot not to press in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This interesting one by one printed tile would appear to be the prosthetic eye which Groot steals whilst trying to escape the Ravagers. This looks like one of the Anulax batteries which Rocket Raccoon stole in the same movie. And I probably should recognise this, but I don't. If you do, please let me know in the comments below. So after a little thought and some help from Google, this would definitely appear to be a box of stuff from Guardians of the Galaxy. I would say it's Rocket Raccoon's toolbox, but I can't remember if he had one or not. It's a gift that's easy to dismiss if you don't know what it is. If you're a true Guardians of the Galaxy fan, I think you might appreciate this. And so we reach the final calendar on Tuesday's door opening adventure. We are up to door number six, and let's see what we got. <gasps> Ooh, we got a minifigure and a Moaning Myrtle minifigure. That is nice. Not at all festive. Um, yeah, definitely not festive. Not go in the dark either. Uh, that's okay. That's not a problem. Uh, but yes, Moaning Myrtle. Uh, Myrtle Elizabeth Warren, I think, before she was killed by the Basilisk. Anyway, always a good day to get a minifigure. Especially good to get one from Harry Potter. Let's put Myrtle together and we'll take a closer look. And so what a fantastic way to finish the day. This is, of course, Myrtle Elizabeth Warren, who was born around 1928 or 29 and was killed by the Serpent of Slytherin in 1943. 50 points if it goes through her head! Brought to life by the fabulous Shirley Henderson, Moaning Myrtle, as she is better known, resided in the U-Bends of the second floor girls' lavatory. Like Harry Potter, Myrtle comes with a 2x4 plate, indicating she may be a game piece. This is only the second time Myrtle has been immortalised as a minifigure. The first time was in the Harry Potter Collectible Minifigures Series 2. Far from being a selection of recycled parts, this Moaning Myrtle has an exclusive torso print and head print. She would have been around the age of 13 when she came into contact with the Basilisk and suddenly died. For that reason, we have the medium poseable legs. The torso printing is really crisp, showing the Ravenclaw uniform, and has a bunch of metallics to give the illusion that Myrtle is a ghost. We find more of that detail around the back, as well as the hood of the robes. Myrtle's hair is absolutely fantastic and made out of a rubbery plastic. Like many of these minifigures, Myrtle has two expressions. This one gives her a devious edge, 
whilst the other Monchos are looking majorly upset. As a Potterhead, this is a really nice minifigure to get inside the advent calendar. Not only is Myrtle a great character, she's also relatively uncommon. But will this be enough for LEGO Harry Potter to scoop gift of the day? Let's find out! And so, after yesterday's bitter bitter disappointment, I'm actually quite impressed with this plethora of premium plastic playthings. But which one of these gifts deserves to hang out with Tippy and enjoy a few of his special cookies? And which needs to spend the rest of eternity in the U-Bend with Moaning Myrtle? Let's award some points! In last place and earning one point for LEGO Star Wars, it's the Bad Batch Shuttle. For me this was a little bit too obscure and I didn't like the way it fitted together. In fourth place earning two points for LEGO Friends is the Ava Mini Doll. It's always a good day when you get a minifigure, except when it's not a minifigure. In the middle of the pack earning three points is the Guardians of Galaxy with this box of tools, or whatever the things are. First impressions were not good, but as I learned what the things were, this made a lot more sense. In second place earning four points for LEGO City is Tippy Dorman. I really like this minifigure, but it picked the wrong day to go up against Potter. That means five points in Gift of the Day goes to the boy what Gondon lived, Harry Potter. But which one of these gifts deserves a bonus point for Festive Gift of the Day? You could argue that Tippy's cookie is a sugar cookie and that's kind of a Christmas thing, but you're not getting a bonus point that easily, LEGO City. I'm declaring that none of these gifts are festive and I'm withholding the bonus point. Now of course the question is, do you agree with today's scores? Do I deserve a visit from Clone Force 99 for dissing their Omicron class attack shuttle? Or maybe I deserve to encounter a basilisk in a flooded bathroom for my over generous scoring of Moaning Myrtle? As always, please do share your thoughts in the comments section, not that you need any encouragement, and I'll respond to as many as I can. The selection in today's calendar was night and day compared to what we got yesterday. So let's figure out how today's points affect the leaderboard. Remaining in last place with 14 points, it's the LEGO Friends. In joint second place we have Guardians of the Galaxy with 18 points, and surprise surprise, LEGO City also with 18 points. That means we also have a tie for first place. With 19 points it's LEGO Star Wars, and using the protective charm Protego, Harry Potter has managed to fight back to first place. It's a very close race with only one point separating four calendars. Knowing Harry Potter, he'll come back tomorrow and flush his lead down Moaning Myrtle's toilet. But that's a story for another day. As always, don't forget to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, and check out my Instagram. Not that I'm doing anything on there, but it's nice to have followers. I'll be back again tomorrow, opening up every door number 7 on every LEGO advent calendar. So thanks a million for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you on Woeful or Wicked Wednesday.